Well, hi, my name is Greg and welcome to chapter 21 of my 1949 P3 Rover restoration story. In this series of YouTube videos, I've been covering uh, various aspects of the restoration process on my 1949 Rover. In each chapter, I usually cover a, a particular aspect of the restoration. In this chapter, I'm going to cover the refurbishment work done on the sunroof of my 1949 Rover. The video will follow the usual format that I've had in other videos in this series, uh, where I highlight any challenges that popped up along the way, and then how I went about problem solving. I know of at least a couple of other P3 Rover owners who have uh, refurbishment work to do on the sunroofs on their car, uh, so I'm hoping this video will at least be of interest to them, and hopefully to a few other people as well. I'll start off with a few photos that were taken uh, before any work was done on the sunroof and then I'll move on to the repair work done and then finally to the reassembly. Uh, so let's get on and uh, have a look at this sunroof. Uh, these photos show the sunroof of my P3 before any work was done on the sunroof. Uh, the photos were taken at a restoration workshop where I had uh, rust repairs and painting done in my car. Uh, so it just, just gives you an idea of what I started off with. Uh, the photos were taken before we found a, a lot of rust in the body and therefore before we took the body off the chassis and the sunroof out of the car. Uh, so it wasn't originally my plan to do that at the restoration workshop but uh, the uh, discovery of uh, endless rust uh, uh, sort of drove the process really. Here you can see the front edge or rather where the front edge of the sliding part of the sunroof closes against the body of the car. Uh, you can see the remnants of the old rubber seal. Now judging by the condition of the rubber seal I think it's probably the original rubber seal. Oh, I have some new rubber that I'll fit uh, to it later on. Uh, you can also see the old style tacks holding that rubber seal in place and yeah, one of the things I just find fascinating about this restoration process is just the insight you get into uh, how things were made all those years ago. I'm just sitting in the car as it is now. I'm just going to point to the area where the new piece of rubber will be tacked to. I've got a piece of rubber which I think will do the job okay and it just tacks into that. Uh, it's sort of like a fibrous material along that edge. Uh, which you, you, you can tack into fairly uh, readily. So now we have the fixed uh, rear section of that sunroof removed and you can see the spaces that hold that section at the right height. Uh, you can also see the interior fixed section uh, which is a fairly lightweight steel frame uh, with fabric stretched over it. Although in these photos it's kind of hard to tell that it is fabric uh, but it is. And this is uh, that material that uh, is tacked on to that interior fixed section of the sunroof. Uh, so as you can see it's fabric and it seems to have some sort of coating on it which would uh, make it I guess wind and uh, I guess possibly moisture proof as well uh, for reasons best known to the body repair workshop they decided to remove that but no matter really, I was going to get it uh, recovered anyway. This shows the rear passenger side corner of the sliding part of the sunroof. And as you may be able to tell, there's a little bit of buckling evident there on that corner. And as we delve in further, it becomes evident why that buckling is there. It's uh, due to some quite extensive wood rot in the timber frame of the sunroof. As I understand it, wood rot is a fungus that feeds on the wood or more precisely the cellulose in the wood. Uh, and as it does that, it just destroys the strength of the wood. So you're just left with this sort of mushy, powdery mess in the end. Like most funguses, it likes a, a damp, damp and dark place. Uh, my car spent most of its working life in Auckland, New Zealand, where it does rain quite a bit more than it does uh, here in Adelaide, uh, Australia. Just a couple of shots that show that uh, inner fixed section, but this time taken from inside the car. Just showing that uh, fixed section again, focusing on an area where uh, the front sliding section slides under the fixed section. Uh, now what appears to be a spacer here is a spacer, but it's more than that. It also serves as a guide for that uh, sliding section as it slides under the fixed section. I made uh, new spacers, uh, mainly because I had some missing and the ones that were left weren't in great condition. I also replaced uh, the fixed screw that you can see here and that was in pretty terrible, well, the original ones were in pretty terrible shape, uh, they were bent and quite corroded. This rear section also has a, a couple of buffers, you can see one of them here. The buffers are just a, a piece of rubber tube uh, that had been sort of flattened and then tacked into place. 
And here are the two buffers removed, uh, as you can see. Just a simple piece of rubber tube that's been flattened out. I'm pretty sure that's the original idea. I um, mean, I'll replace it with something similar, but uh, just some new material. Well, I'm poking my head through the opening where the rear fixed section of the sunroof would be. Uh, and you can see there are little uh, screw holes there that retain the inner fixed section. And as we move over to the edge here, you can see some spaces. It looks like not all the spaces are the same height. Uh, and I've also got some spaces missing. They went uh, missing uh, in the body shop at some point. Um, so I'm going to have to make some more. I'm not sure exactly what material these are made out of. I think they're probably originally rubber. Uh, but they've gone so hard now, it's hard to tell. I mean, they almost look like Bakelite, but pretty sure they were rubber. Um, so I'm going to use them as a template. So I'm going to start off with the assumption that the height of the spaces on one side is the same on the other side. Uh, I need to start off with some assumption. Ultimately, I'm just going to have to make the spaces to, to the height I think they should be. Uh, put the sunroof, fix the part of the sunroof back in position. Uh, see how it sits in terms of height and then make fine adjustments after that. And here's uh, one of the spaces that I made uh, out of Dilwyn. So I just started off with a, a rod of Dilwyn like so and turned it up. I mean the tricky bit was really just determining what length to make them. I numbered uh, the remaining spaces uh, and measured each one so that I could uh, make my new ones to the same height. Uh, and I also, as I mentioned before, I worked on the assumption uh, that the missing spaces needed to be made to the same height as the corresponding spacer on the other side of the sunroof. Perhaps predictably, uh, my assumption proved to be wrong, uh, but at least it gave me a starting point, uh, as I said, about making the spacers. My general aim at this point was to get everything as ready as possible for taking to the motor trimmer. So I kept a careful record of how things are put together uh, by taking lots of photos. Uh, my idea being that this would help the motor trimmer further down the track. Uh, and also I set about uh, cleaning up and uh, re-lubricating the latch mechanism uh, so that that works smoothly. I did quite a bit of cleaning of the frame and general repairs as I went along. Here you can see most of the frame uh, from the front uh, sliding section. I'm pretty sure that it's in original condition uh, and I'm also pretty sure that orange rust uh, priming paint that you can see here is original. I've seen this same paint uh, splashed around various places uh, on various underbody bits on, on my P3 so it seems to be what they used back in the day. And just another shot of the framework here as you can see a section where I had uh, some wood rot cut out uh, has been replaced with new timber uh, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, there are quite a few holes from a multitude of tacks that have been used in the trimming process. Uh, I think adhesives back in 1949 were nowhere near as good as what we have uh, these days. Subsequently, they used tacks in vast quantities. Perhaps the main bit of work at this point was to repair uh, all the wood screw holes. Uh, most of the uh, screw holes were oversized and a bit worn. I drilled them out and then uh, tapped in and glued uh, little uh, plastic plugs. Not original, uh, but at least I'm confident that the screws will hold now. Uh, I cleaned up all the surface rust on the frame and, uh, and then just repainted that with a rattle can. On the front edge of this sliding part of the sunroof, there's a, a rubber buffer strip. Uh, I replaced that because, uh, as you'd expect, the original rubber was pretty perished. Now I've got the fixed part of the sunroof here and it's just a few things I want to show. So as you can see, it's green. Uh, but if you look at the edge here, uh, it looks like it was originally black, uh, which is what I would expect. Uh, every green Rover with a sunroof, well, they all have sunroofs, uh, but every green P3 Rover that I've seen has a black sunroof. Uh, so when I get this recovered, I'll, I'll go back to black. I'll go back in black. A few other things to show as well. Um, it's obviously had a bit of work done over the years. Uh, so <laughs> it has uh, what looks like a, a beach towel here, which I'm pretty sure isn't... Uh, what the rover people would have put uh, in there in the day and as you uncover that uh, it's a very interesting shade of purple uh, so i think at some stage this has been refinished uh, so if you look at it closely there's little, little bits of sort of pitting in the steel 
So I think at some stage somebody's uh, sort of cleaned it back and, and repainted it. And if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's been hand painted. So that looks like uh, it definitely wasn't done in the Rover factory. I've removed the, the timber frame that goes uh, underneath here. And when I had the car in the body shop, uh, they, they had a, a specialist woodworker. So I had him uh, repair all the sections that were had wood rot. So this whole section has been replaced uh, and you can see on the end here, uh, there's been a little bit of wood rot uh, replaced as well, or wood rot uh, fixed rather. Uh, just looking at the other side of that fixed section now, uh, so I've got the timber framing just sort of sitting there loose at the moment. So I'm going to you know, replace all the wood screws uh, that hold that together uh, with some new screws. And here you can just see a steel section which has a, a slight curve in it. I have heard uh, on some forums that this fixed section is meant to have some holes in it for uh, like an anti-drumming measure. But I'm pretty sure this is the original piece of steel and it hasn't got that. So I'm assuming this is how it should be. It look, again, it looks like it may have been repainted at some point. As you can see some paint runs over here. Uh, I suspect that uh, wasn't how it came out of the Rover factory, but as far as I know, that is the original piece of steel. Well, I've got my uh, Rover Sports Register P3 workshop manual here, which is a really helpful publication. And it's got a nice section here on the sliding roof refurbishment. Um, so I'm looking at that, it's a really good article. Uh, and it shows a diagram here of that thick section of the sunroof. And as you can see, it refers to a perforated steel sheet, uh, which is different to what I've got on my car. So I'm not sure whether Rover changed the way they did, they did this over the years, or whether the, uh, it's been replaced on my car. But I think that steel sheet on my car is actually original. Uh, so it's a bit of a mystery, really. Now, in the car now, I'm just tracking up and you can see along this edge here there are some holes that have been plugged off uh, that was done in the body shop and i'm wondering whether that was the right thing to do but we couldn't figure out what those holes were for but i wonder if they were part of the sort of anti-drumming measure that rover had built in uh, with this sunroof and lastly i've got the sliding section of the sunroof here and as you can see there's been a water leak so the the lining here is terribly stained but no matter i'm going to get the whole thing recovered uh, when i get the car to the motor trimmer in the not too distant future uh, so again you can see i've had some wood repair done here on the corner uh, so it's looking a whole lot better i'll do a bit more sort of this general cleaning up on it uh, the wood and so on and so forth and, and patching up any of the sort of bigger holes that's probably all i'll do before i get it to the motor trimmer you can see here there's a bracket and there's, that's where the, it slides on, on like a rail for the sunroof. And then at the front section you have this catch which is activated. There's a handle that goes on here and that activates this mechanism. Uh, so this basically clamps on the front slide uh, as you lock uh, that handle shut. Okay, I'm here in the car now I'm just going to show a few bits of this uh, sunroof assembly. It's going to be hard to show this well, but that's uh, the back edge of the fixed section. Uh, so you can see this heavy duty uh, piece of timber framework. And as we track along the side there, you can see a new piece of timber that's been made uh, for the framework. What you can't see is the spaces because they're essentially hidden by the, the rail that the sliding section of the sunroof runs on. Uh, and here you can see uh, that inner fixed section uh, without the fabric cover on it. Uh, so I've got it all sort of tacked together now, uh, really ready to, to be pulled out again for motor trimming. Just looking at the roof of the car now, you can see the height that this fixed section is sitting at. Visually it seemed to me that maybe it was a little too high. Uh, however, if you were to go any lower, I think what you'd find is that this sliding part is not going to slide under the fixed section as it's supposed to. So it probably is about right. Uh, there's a trim or sort of beading that goes around the edge here, which is sort of tacked in place. Uh, it's not there now, because I couldn't see any point in putting that there, given that I'm going to get all the trim redone.
I'm thinking that it might be helpful to look at the reassembly sequence for this sunroof, uh, bearing in mind that the disassembly sequence is the exact opposite. So the first thing to do is to fit the sliding front section. This is pretty straightforward. So this is the sliding, sorry, the sliding front section here. Uh, and the trick is uh, there's sliders, which are actually part of the latch mechanism as well uh, in here, which you disengage with the rail. Now that part that I just described as a slider, I'm showing in more detail here. Now it, it is a slider in as much that it slides along that guide rail for the sunroof. Uh, but as I've already explained, it's more than that. It's also part of the latching or locking mechanism. So as you turn that locking handle, it, it tightens up on the guide rail. So once those front sliders are engaged with the rail, you can slide it forward like so. And eventually you get to the point where you have to engage the rear sliders with uh, that guide rail. So just to keep things clear, here's a detailed shot of that rear slider again. Uh, that has some felt inside that slider, which you put a little bit of oil on so you get a nice uh, smooth operation as you slide along. So when you get to the point where you need to engage those rear sliders, you need to lift that back edge of the sliding part up slightly in order to get a, a neat engagement with the rail. The next section to fit is this fixed interior section. Uh, you can see the framework for it here. And you can see some self-tapping screws as we go around. So those self-tapping screws obviously come in from the top. Bear in mind that this has fabric on it when it's actually finished. It is worth being aware that this uh, interior fix section will only go in one way um, because the holes that retain it aren't perfectly symmetrical. They're fairly close but not perfect. Uh, so before you take it out, I think it's worth marking uh, which is front and back. And lastly, we come to fix uh, the exterior fix section, uh, which is simply a matter of putting it in place uh, with the uh, spaces in uh, situ before you do that uh, to hold it at the right height. And it's retained by some really big wood screws, as you can see here, 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 and over here. And here we have the bolt that holds uh, the front spacer, which is also a guide for the sliding section. Well, hi again. Uh, that's about all for this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. I think as I mentioned at some point in the video, I still have the motor trimming work to do on the sunroof of my car. A little hard to estimate when I'll get around to getting that done. It's looking like probably early next year at this rate. I've just started some annual leave now, so I'm hoping to make some pretty good progress on the car over the coming weeks and also to get some further videos out in this series. Uh, the next video in this series will most probably cover work that I've done in fitting new rubber mats on the running boards on my car. Uh, I've also got a fair bit of general reassembly work to cover, so enough I think for at least a few more chapters. Uh, so bye for now and hope to see you in another video.